and roll marathon just because when you understand social media and how to be in touch with I don't even like to call them fans I call them friends you know because they're all your friends on, on even a fan page and um, so focusing all my attention on that is what's kind of helped um, increase the participation and the success of this this event is this the first year first year over 10,000 people run it first year people are saying that's unheard of for a first year event, especially from an unknown race promoter. You know, I, I host little small 500 to 1,000 person events in San Diego. Um, so to now come out first year, 10,000 people, and now everyone is saying, who is Ken Wadike? Who is Superhero Events? Where did this come from? You know, and so it's just really been a Explain blessing. Explain Superhero Events. Well, um, <laughs> I've always- I'm showing a picture okay. while you tell me. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, well, Superhero Events, I, um, for I guess even as a kid, you know, you, you kind of always wish that superheroes really exist. That at some point, someone's going to come to your aid and take you out of this rut that you're in. Um, and just knowing that there's not, you know, I figured through these running events, it takes superheroes to go out and accomplish these crazy feats. Of I mean, when you see someone who's been bedridden or couch ridden for years, they're overweight, and they just decide, you know what, I'm going to run a 5K. I'm gonna go and run a half marathon or this or that. That's that superhero mentality that it takes to get up and go and do that. So in the superhero portion, it's not just how we feel as a staff, but it's also what we feel um, all of the participants are to the event as well. So, I mean, technically I view it as 10,000 superheroes are about to come out and run this Hollywood half marathon because a portion of their um, race entries go to support charities like this like the Covenant House it's all that superhero mentality you're helping the less fortunate through you coming out and, and running so the name and just that makes is sense a superhero. it really is that's what you do you help people that are in need that's it you know so your first statement that superheroes don't really exist is incorrect that is true that's very true no they do they do exist and they exist in all of the people they go out and they support these events who sometimes people don't even know that they're supporting a charity by going out to run an event it, it's all part of the package and people that have um, well frankly people that are especially in LA right um, a mile and a half away from Covenant House mm -hmm. Seriously. Yes. Only a mile and a half away from Covenant House. Yeah. In any direction. Yeah, in any direction. Many don't even know it exists. Right. Right. It can be that close yeah. and that far away. That's true. Drive past it every day and just wonder what is, is Covenant House, you know? And, uh, and it's crazy because there's a lot of people that even have a heart to support these sort of... Um, charities and, and shelters but they just don't know where to even start how can I get out and help some of these people so it's it's almost like being able to bring it to them hey you've always wanted to help well here you go I know you like sporting events I know you like fitness here's your opportunity help and you. oh and here's a little reminder that this place is, is here. here exactly and that there are people that need this place. exactly exactly because you can't even if you know about this place right. you can forget about it oh easily easily you know you get yeah. caught up of course of course you may have kids that are 18 and 18 months and six years old yes for instance very true <laughs> very true you know and and just like what you were saying earlier about is it a is it a distant memory for me i think it's the reason why it can never be a distant memory it's because i'm always going to have that heart to want to help the people that are in this same situation because when I was, I remember, when I was living at the Gramercy shelter with my family, my favorite time that I had there was the, the book reading time. And it would be people from the local community, and they would come down and they would pick a story each week or over a two week period, and they would read that story to us. And I think at the time I might have been 11 or 12 years old, and with all the mess and the chaos that, that we were going through at the, at the time, sometimes not knowing how we were going to eat or where our clothes were going to come from. I remember being able to just get lost in this person reading this story. And that's how I fell in love with the story of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. This guy comes down. Um, he might have only been in his 20s. I don't know if he was just volunteering his time. I wish I could even find the guy now to thank him because it was an escape for me. When someone can actually just come down, read a story to you. I didn't need much. I didn't need it. I didn't care even about the food sometimes. 
I can get lost. I was, I felt like I was a character in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It became my favorite story for the rest of my life, just because someone cared that much. Let me just go down and read to these kids, you know, and. Um, and so a lot of times it's not about money or it's not about giving someone this or that. Just care that, that we're here or that we're going through these sort of things, you know. And it, it can influence a person's life. It can make the difference of, am I going to go outside and get in trouble and do something to vent uh, all of my frustration? Or can I release that just in going in the fantasy world, reading this story, you know. So it's, it's really great. What does it feel like making me sit you back out here on the street like this in Hollywood with all the traffic going by and all this? What was um, what was the most difficult part of putting the race together, or you know, of being, of being on, not, not on the street, but, but back out here shelter. like that? Oh man! Um, Do you remember what what you, what you hated most? I think the hardest part for me was how it affected me academically. Um, we had, at, at the shelter that we were at, there was a lights out hour, which never made sense to me. It was at seven o'clock. And while trying to be an athlete in high school, you know, you get out of school at three, at three o'clock. So from three o'clock till about five, 530, I'm practicing my sport. So I'm out there at track practice. 530, by the time I get on the, on the uh, trolley to get back home, take public transportation, whether I rode the bus that day or a buddy dropped me off. By the time I get home, it's six o'clock. I eat, I've got what, 30 minutes, I've got to finish my homework before it's lights out. They come in, they check on all the doors and make sure all the lights are out. Now at the time, my family in the shelter that we were at, it was all of us in one room, six of us, five kids, all, all the kids in my family and then my mom. So six of us in this little, what was like a hotel room that we lived for a long time, you know, and so when they have lights out, that, I remember that really frustrating us because you've got five kids in here trying to do your homework and having to hide the light. We would actually pick up candles when we were out and have to hide the light so they can't see it under the door or they came and come and bang on the door. It's lights out, you know. It's seven o'clock. The rest of the world doesn't even go to sleep till 10. And here I am, I have to go to bed at seven. I never understood why. And I'm in high school. How can I do my homework? Right. You know, so I would have to get up really early and be able to finish my homework on the bus. And of course, a lot of times I wasn't able to finish my homework. And so when you have to hide to your school teachers or your friends, when they say, well, how come you didn't finish your homework? And you know why you couldn't finish it, but of course you can't say that. It's embarrassing. So you know? was it a secret? Of course it was a secret. There's no way you could let something like that out in high school. It would have ruined me, you know? So it's... So how did you live that deception all the time? It was difficult. That, well, that had to wear you down. It was really difficult. Friends were never able to come hang out with me after school. And the craziest part about the whole thing was I, I started to become a great athlete through using sports to... Um, again get away you know because now at the time when I'm older where people aren't coming down and reading stories to me I needed a new way to vent I needed a new way to release my frustrations the fact that I've been in and out of shelters with my family since probably late elementary school all the way up till till high school and it wasn't it's not like my mom was on drugs or anything crazy you know we were we were good people it's just it was tough. There's a lot of kids in our family. Um, dad wasn't around. We lived in L.A. At, the, at one of the toughest times it was to be in L.A. We were here during the Rodney King riots. We were here, I mean, uh, uh, during the, uh, the O.J. trial and the earthquakes. L.A. was a mess back then, you know, and so it was just really tough for people to find stability in a place where all the stores are being looted and burned up and everything was just really crazy. It was really tough to, to find work. And so that had us hopping in and out of shelters, in and out of shelters, never finding stability. So you get to high school now, knowing that you've been homeless the majority of your, all of junior high school, the late portion of elementary, um, and then all throughout high school. So it was kind of hidden because that instability caused us to need to change schools every year. Every year from late elementary to high school, I was in a different school every single year. The only time that I stayed in a school two years was my junior and senior year in high school. And it was primarily because at that point I put my foot down. I said, Mom, 
I'm, I've gotten good at this track thing now, you know, and if I move, I have to go start all over somewhere else. My team needs me, you know, we, we, uh, we're going to win the league championships, and so I needed Your that. Your life needs My me. life needs this. A scholarship, everything depends on this now. I'm sure college coaches didn't want to see the instability of, well, you were never in the same school twice, you know, and so having to keep that as a secret, the only person that knew what we were going through was my high school counselor and eventually my track coach. And it was because there was a time when he was gonna kick me off of the track team because I didn't wanna run the distance that he wanted me to run. And we ended up having a, uh, a parent coach conference and I was there. And so my mom finally let that out to my coach and it became one of those I had no idea type of thing, you know, and I didn't want sympathy. Exactly. I just wanted to keep playing my sport the way I was playing it, you know. But I, but I do appreciate him for that because he did eventually force me to run the mile, which um, I found out was a better event for me, and, and I became really great at that. So I was able to walk a lot more confidently versus if you would have met me in high school, I don't even think I could have had this sort of conversation with you because I was just so shy. I wouldn't, there was... Uh, or you were used to keeping the secret. You have to, you have to, since elementary school, junior high, high school, so everything is a secret. You know, in high school, during lunch break, when, and I'm, at this time, I'm a star athlete. I, I went undefeated my, um, my junior year and my senior year in, in the mile. We won our, uh, our league championships for cross country. I ended up becoming league champion in the mile. And even still, with being a star athlete, lunchtime, I never hung outside with all the rest of the kids. I hung inside my history teacher's classroom um, trying to finish all of my homework to make sure I can beat it before lights out, you know, or before lights out. So it was just really tough uh, not being able to be that social because one, you're keeping a secret that you don't want to get out to the school. And then two, for necessity, I needed to finish my homework. I needed to make sure that my grades were on point. You couldn't even enjoy being, being a, a, star being a star athlete. No, not at all. Not at all. It was never. There was never there glamorized. To that. Of course there are. <laughs> I could have had a girlfriend. I could have had a lot of things. But how can you have a girlfriend if you know you're going home to a homeless shelter? There's nothing that I had that I felt I can impress anyone with. There was nothing that I had except I can run the mile fast. And to me, I didn't understand how that even really benefited me outside of, well, I can uh, get to college on this. And I felt that making it to college was finally gonna be my way to, to not have to deal with what I've dealt with my entire life. I just need to get to college. That was my primary goal, my number one goal. Just get to college. A dorm is better than a shelter. Same size as a shelter. You know, it's literally. Well, it's one or two people. Two people. <laughs> it's not your whole family. It's not you having to fight your your sister or your brothers for for space. In and there's there. no lights out. There's no lights out in a dorm. It's lights on because you need to finish your homework. You know. So, so where did you go? I ended up going to Cal State San Marcos. I got accepted to UCLA. I got accepted to USC, but um, USC I, I couldn't get a full ride scholarship there. And, um, and eventually I wanted to be closer to my family, so I decided to stay in San Diego. And even better, um, Steve Scott, who holds the, or held the American mile record and is still known as the greatest miler in America, came down to watch me at a race and um, decided to offer me a scholarship to stay in San Diego because he took a coaching position at Cal State San Marcos. So I ended up going there and it worked out. I, I was there a few years and um, eventually it, it just all of the, difficulty that I dealt with uh, with my studies growing up it really started to show in college it just became really tough and I figured well I might be a better entrepreneur than I would be uh, with going through getting my degree and trying to find a job you know I, I felt like there's too much in my past that might make it a little bit uh, difficult to, to find the right job you know?